Boom, I still love in the intro. Uh, thanks everybody for being here so much. Thank you for the community. Thank you for Facebook. Thank you everybody out there, uh, especially tonight. Uh, so we got a couple changes going on. We have uh, a very good panelists again, just as last week we did. This is part two of our series about work, about cover letters. And now finally, we kind of discussed that a little bit in the last week. So if you guys are watching that, or if you haven't tuned back into that one, highly recommend it. Tons of packful information there. Um, I'm on my phone right now, you guys can see. Disa Cameron, our, one of our hosts from the AV Tech Talks, has helped me out today. I unfortunately have some bad internet, so thank you, Disa, for being the mastermind of tonight's show and helping us <laughs> run this. My very first live stream. <laughs> she's doing great. Listen, she did all the cues right. She got up here right. I'm on screen. She's on screen. Uh, also, also, we, we got uh, uh, Austin Jackson back here with us as well. He's back on his on his work trip. What's up, Austin? What's going on? I am so happy to be back in action with you guys. Good to see you, Disa. Good to see you, Omar. How's everyone been? Been good, man. It's been crazy. So I, I did a show today. I, I want to say I'm in the middle of nowhere, Florida, but I did a show today. I got out early, checked into where, the, checked into where I was going to with a friend, and um, internet was bad. So I like frantically called Disa. I'm like, yo, I need you to get on. Help me out do this stuff because I can't do it. I'm on my phone right now, as you can see. Um, but I'm super stoked about tonight's panelists. I'm stoked about the talk conversation tonight. I'm actually really more stoked about the conversation because uh, Austin, as you and me know from this, and Deez as well, not, you know, because you're in the fold with us now. The the crazy part about social media, right, is that it is so easy to look up somebody, and yes. it is astonishing. Not even astonishing. So, like for example, um, anybody who's watching the show right now, if you if you don't believe me, Google AV Educate or Google my personal name. And you will see a plethora of things pop up on page one. I have done no SEO anything. Um, I haven't done anything. It just it populates. And I'm assuming part of that is because of what we do here. And part of that's from the community. So I'm, I'm proud of that. But again, I'm talking a lot, Austin. Let's introduce our guest. Disa, let, let, let's make this happen. I want to talk about social media presence and how we see that. We had a, we had a perfect panel for that today. Um, so first, you know, obviously we have the legend herself, Ray Harris, back here with us again. Thank you, Ray, for being here with us. We got Megan, uh, I'm going to say this, Megan Benbelt. Benbelt? Got it. Oh, got, got it. it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> See? I need to, we need to, Deezer, remember, this, we need to clip this for future stuff. So when you guys make fun of me, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Tom Sack with us again on the show. Thank you so much for being here with us, Tom. And I, again, I was Steve Warren. Thank you for being back with us as well, man. Thank you for having me. So I want to jump right into this. Uh, and uh, I'll actually I'll let Joss. Uh, Austin jump into this. I was doing so good, man. I'll let Austin jump into this a little bit. So um, tonight's about social media presence, right? And I and I would like to think that my social media, and Austin, you let me know, relatively spells family and 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 AB educate, right? Um, what would you say from knowing me personally? Does my social media represent other than some pranks here and there between, you know, people that I know? Um, I would, for, first and foremost, I would definitely say family is the first thing that I realize. Um, the, you are, you, you, sh you show your love for the people around you as well as for what you do. And that, that's clear as day. That's the first things you're going to see on Facebook. So. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So, so <laughs> that, that's, that's my, my, my social media presence, right? And hopefully people that would hire me see that, uh, Steve, I, I'll start with you first. What is someone that you were looking at hiring for candidate and you saw their social media and you, you got maybe a difference versus what their resume said? Uh, I would definitely call in and find out where that discrepancy is in, in their social media page as, as opposed to the resume. Maybe there's some things missing. Maybe there's some embellishments going on. And just to kind of clarify that to make sure that they are the same person that is coming to that show site. Very cool. Very cool. What about Megan? Um, Megan, do you have any stories? Pretty much with, I have so many, but it's a lot of what Steve said for me. It's um, making sure that there's like a timeline that makes sense. And especially with my clients, if I send it a candidate, that they can actually do the work. Um, I do have one client that was very nervous because they had hired a vMix op previously that said they could do the job. And then they got to site and they couldn't do it. So they were pretty much in the crapper. Um, so when I was able to provide them with a VMix app who was like absolutely certified, knew what they were doing, they were in good hands. So for me, it's always making sure about the embellishment. 
And Ray, I'll, I'll come to you next. What, what, what experience have you had or seen? Well, I can't say, of course, Pepper's going to start. Um, I can't say that uh, I've had any interactions with people who weren't what they said they were. So not as far as social media versus their resume. Um, but I will say that the fake it till you make it doesn't work in this industry. Not at all. It just doesn't. No, super valid. And me and Austin have had this conversation multiple times about, about that kind of figure to make a mentality that in our industry, you can try that, but we are very quick to find that out and very quick to weed that out of our industry all the time. Tom, what about you? You have any experiences on what you saw on a resume versus what social media provided for you when you looked at this candidate even further? He's muted. No, not so much. Um, I haven't seen too much, uh, too much social media presence on people I've, uh, I've, I've hired. So, so you, you bring up a good point here. So how about on the flip side and I'll open this up to the floor. What about on the flip side? If someone doesn't have enough of a social media presence, does that cause anybody for pause when you're hiring somebody? It doesn't cause me any pause. So. No. 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 It makes Nobody it difficult sometimes in regards because I operate a lot on LinkedIn as a recruiter. So if yeah. I don't see a LinkedIn presence, it makes it really hard sometimes to track somebody down and to figure out if they are the right person I am looking for. So I always would love to see a bit of a LinkedIn presence for sure. I try to Especially reserve judgment because you don't want to see my LinkedIn page. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a whole lot there. Um, I, I can't I can't judge tech primarily by their social media presence, but I do. And what I mean by that is I have seen technicians that I have known were going to be on certain gigs and their political influence is so heavy that their feeds on their Facebooks and Instagram looks like they're at war, so to speak. So I've had to have discussions with some of these techs ahead of time and let them know kind of there's a time and place for everything and the workplace is not the place for these types of conversations just because of what I saw on social media. And I will tell you, it has saved my butt before. Now on the flip side, if someone doesn't have so much of a social media presence, you also have to remember some of the real experienced veteran techs in our industry they have been around a lot longer than social media has, and some of them has been adapted to technology in terms of our industry, but not so much in terms of the Facebooks and Instagrams and LinkedIn's and things of the sort. So I, I, I do believe that social media is one of the tools and resources that we should utilize when we are judging character in terms of what we're trying to bring aboard our team, but I, I definitely won't say it's an end-all be-all. What's nice is when you can uh, look somebody up and see people that they know that you know in common. So you can, you, yes. can, you know, ask that person about them. Yes. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I would look for, because if you think I'm not going to look for you on Facebook after you sent me a resume, you're crazy. I am going to be looking for you. Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever it is. Um, I'm not going to judge you on your political perspective. But even if we shared the same political views, if you're not a nice person on Facebook about whatever it is you're passionate about, you can be passionate about a lot of things. If you're not nice about it, I'm going to take a little harder look at you. But I totally agree with Tom that I also want to see who, who you know in common that I might be able to just sneak a little text to somebody and say, hey, what do you think about this person? I, I agree a thousand percent with what you just said. Whether we share the same political views, yes, no, or maybe so. But just even if you and I share different political views and we can be completely human about it and respectful of each other, I'm cool for it. But even if you and I have that relationship, someone on the outside of that conversation may not be so friendly with either one of us because they're not that type of person. So I look at it from those type of aspects as well. So for me, I'd rather just not have those conversations at work anyway. 
Well, people who know me can can tell you that I have two things that we do not discuss on show site, and that's politics and religion. Yes. We just do not do not go there for any reason because we, we want to keep the love. To that. <laughs> add sports. Well, sports sometimes I can add to that for sure, depending on the group. Yep. But, uh, if, if they're doing it friendly, you know, feel free, have fun with it. But if they're being unfriendly about it, that's when those conversations have to stop and, and the topic has to be put on the do not talk list. I, I agree. Have you ever seen Yankees and, and, um, and Red Sox in the same room? <laughs> yes. yes, I have. <laughs> I find that social media helps us in, in the hiring process too, like what I think reiterating and seeing the different connections, the references, and being able to uh, build different teams in different markets and find out you know, who's available. And kind of for me on my end, I like to put personalities together, knowing that certain people can work better with other people and, yes. and knowing that maybe they have a tighter friendship with somebody else. And so I try to group people based on those that are effective in the workplace, number one, but also can kind of get along with each other. And, you know, while we're talking like political issues, I find it's a real important to re-say this, you know, there are what I would call it a separation of church and state and, and just kind of keeping things and being about what we're there to do and, and being mindful of the time that we're getting, because it's not yes, a platform sir. for us to spread our political agendas. It's yeah. a platform for them to spread their agenda, so to speak, whether we agree with it or not, we have that choice yes. to, either take that call, take that gig, pass it off to somebody else who may have that belief system, whether it's political, religion, education based, you know, there's a lot of triggers out there that are that are upsetting people. So it's, for me, it's about putting people to work and, and you know, empowering those that have those messages and finding those that are not going to be, you know, trying to take this, the attention away from what the event is there for. That is um, so powerful. So powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Steve, I find myself agreeing with you consistently on pretty much anything you say. <laughs> um, you know, it's for me. So previously, I was a labor manager for breakouts and LEDs. So it was like a lot of personalities all at once. And it's like, okay, well, we have breakouts where there's like, you know, 70 people running around with an insane timeline. And it's truly thinking about the personalities that are involved. Because if you put one person who just cannot play nice, it's like 60 people are just going to revolt. And I personally don't have the tolerance or patience for it. So it was truly like, you know, like really making sure. And if someone would like question me about it or fight with me about it, I'd be like, no, 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 please listen to my logic about it. And generally after I'd really explain it out, they'd be like, you know what? You're right, Megan, you're right. And on top of that, one thing that I've really thought about, and which is a reason why I really am thankful for AV Educate and, you know, being involved in this community is that I find that this is so community based. Everything we do is community based and it teaches tolerance. So even though we all may have different political or religious beliefs, I would hope, I really would hope that we would be kind enough to really exercise tolerance. And if we can't, we learn how to. And that's what I've encouraged people to do. Again, powerful, powerful. Yeah. Man, Omar, we got some bombs coming out tonight, boy. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, this, this panel was amazing last week. I knew they'd be amazing this week. I knew having you on here as well would, would make it great. And Disa as well on board, it was going to be like, a whole no low for the social media stuff and it's funny megan just to jump on what you were saying real quick i i i'm at a location right now that a, a buddy of mine who on social media we have had clear dis you know uh not disregard but clear distinction on like our views of things but on the job site everything's good because we know like this is our views yeah. but it doesn't doesn't mean i can't work with you and i can't be friends with you it's just like that's the way i think about something it's not a big deal and like and there's a room full of these guys here that you know, all three of them have disagreed with a bunch of stuff on social media publicly. And, you know, when it comes to work, we, we hang out with yourself. And I see Steve smile. I'm sure you have experience like that. Like somebody you do in Tom as well, or Ray, that there's someone you just, something ha happens. And in our industry, it's like, you know what? That's your opinion, bro. Whatever. But when we get to work, it's like, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear your shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> so I'm true. To add, you know, uh, our Facebook event does have in the description about stretching the truth as well. 
does any of our panelists want to comment on that? Have, and do you have any real case studies that have happened where you might have caught somebody? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They've done something and then they show up on site and they are definitely not as qualified as they made it seem. I've, I've actually found some different things of stretching the truth where you have somebody who is on your show site talking about your show and how bad something is. And it's like, really, oh, really, that wasn't that bad that you needed to go out to Facebook and vent. And, you know, they're not naming what's going on or whatever. So it was, it was slightly harmless. But uh, that was bringing up a whole different topic of, you know, how we talk about shows that we're on, if, <laughs> especially if they're bad, or especially if we have a bad client, um, and how that can be detrimental to an event. But yeah. I, I've so, seen so. it firsthand where a guy said he was an LD, and I'm not going to name any names or a show, but, you know, when I'm getting a call and I was like, oh, you know, and it's like, hey, how do you, do this on the console and then you know then it was like five minutes later well how do you dmx and then it was like very specific questions almost like a step-by-step -step. and then the client calls me not the show that i booked this was like a, a separate labor gig just one of the guys that i know and calling me knowing that i know lighting and it ended up being that he got replaced because he said he was an ld and he wasn't able to communicate the lighting console with the lights and the dmx and understanding the universes so things of that nature get out of hand very quickly. So if you're, you know, saying, hey, I can kind of step in and do a V1 job or an LD job and you don't really have that experience per se and you're on a show site and you've got YouTube open, you know, granted, we've all done it. We've all ran into a situation where we needed YouTube or we needed a tutorial to kind of get through maybe an update or some new technology, right? Like live streaming is very new and NDI and wireless communication whatever but when it comes down to like a bare minimum show where you've got you know static lights and it's a basic dimmer and you're struggling to operate a hog that becomes cumbersome for the client because then that labor coordinator is looking bad that company is looking bad and then that client is then questioning the av production company they're questioning the hotel you know and then that client is going to wonder and their job isn't to stress their job is to come in and produce their show I've also seen it on the flip side where, you know, guys are trying to run a camera because, you know, they come from school and they're, you know, not to knock the school and education, but until you actually put your hands on a, you know, long throw lens with a very big tripod that you probably need two people to, unless you're working out and those things are heavy, you know, and they've dropped the camera. I've watched the stage collapse because, you know, they said they could build a stage and they forgot to turn. And then there goes that $2,500,000 camera with the long throw lens and the tripod all crashing down on that stage. And then we're all like, um, you know, is it the camera guy's fault? Is it stage builder's fault? And, and at the end of the day, it's like nobody cares. We just need a new camera with someone who knows to put it on the tripod correctly and mount it correctly on that, you know, weird mount that comes with that long throw lens. And the it's just a pain. So that becomes critical, too, when you're with robo cams you know guys saying that they're familiar with the robo cams and then it's like they get lost in the networking <laughs> and believe me i've gotten lost too but at some point it's you know when you say you can go do something please please make sure that you you you've studied it for a while you know not just a couple months but that you've done it by yourself with a, with a supervisor you know and the electrical world we call them journeymen we call them you know, like with the electricians and then they become like a master electrician, you know, with the AV world, it's very different because it's temporary. So it's, you know, any guy off the couch can technically run a cable until you watch them coil that cable. And then it becomes a nightmare. Like, wow, we're paying them 15 bucks an hour. You know, it's just minimum wage and we're griping about it. But these guys, the difference between $15 an hour and like 25 bucks an hour, right? That rock and roll, it becomes an issue. And, and so getting to social media, seeing posts which show that you're doing these events, that show you in those leadership positions, really helps us know and helps those clients know that they're going to get a, a tech that knows exactly what they're, what they're buying in a sense. Because uh, you don't want to buy off more than you can chew. I've, I mean, I've got dozens and dozens of story. You know, a guy said he could projection map and we're over there in this, you know, when projection mapping was first coming out. 
And I told them at the very beginning, guys, you need a little DA. You know, the signal's getting split between four or five projectors. It's going this and this way up in the booth. You need a distribution amplifier. And they're like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. And lo and behold, the projectionist was like, oh, I know what I'm doing. And you know, pissing contest later, it was, you know, what a $30 Aja splitter and end of discussion. Wow. We bring up a very good point here about that, that I want the audience to recognize and make sure they're not missing this. That, you know, if you're on a show or a job site and anything you do, like our community is very small, you know, even though we we're cross platform, we're still small. And those things like Ray was saying, or Steve, you were saying that if you're posting something during a job site, it's very likely that your client, your client's client, or your people on the show with you are, are reading that same comment. So be cautious of those things because social media is a powerful tool and you don't realize that we are all connected, you know, and the more you could, and like you're saying earlier, you know, if I, if I connect with you or I make a friends with you and I see you have like 30 of my other friends, now I'm seeing into your network a little bit and you start posting stuff and I start seeing your posts with your posts with other people, I'm going to know something's up. Right. And, and that's, it's, it's a way social media could, could, could hurt you. Obviously you always want it to benefit you as much as you can and you want it to be useful. You know, obviously what we do at AV Educate here is to benefit and help guys out. But yeah, that, that's a good word of a caution here. Like, Hey, don't, don't fake it till you make it. Like we said earlier. And as well, make sure you're not posting things on social media that are making you not only look bad, but making the client look bad. Like that's an immediate way. I'm sure Ray was probably like, Hey, you're lucky you didn't say anything too bad or it should be gone right now because the client saw what you posted on it. Cause you're friends with her or something. You don't even really, you know, like you don't even realize it. Well, and actually for me, it was the crew that brought it to me. They're like, Hey, did you see what so-and-so just said on? Oh, now they're bragging. <laughs> see? So, uh, they were, they were like, really? We, cause they know the story. They're like, hey, did you see the story that got posted on Facebook? And it's like, really? Now, and there are certain things when it comes to a client, because that one was actually focused at me. And it's like, okay, say what you want. I know the truth. And I actually commented on his own posts just so that he knew I saw it and I knew that he was bullshit. But that down the road, we had an event where we had a client who was racist and sexist. And that goes out on Facebook to the DC Stagehands page. People are leaving the show site because of the client and nobody wants to come because of the client. And so I'm completely fine with that. I get the whole scenario. I mean, I'm dealing with the sexist asshole myself. My my first assistant is a black woman, so she's got it double. And nobody wants to come help us now, and everybody's leaving. So not only do we have to be aware of what we're doing with our crew and who we are and how we represent, but also when you come to some extremes like what was happening with us, that that's gonna go that's gonna go out there just like that. Yeah, so a lot of it is about boundaries. And I think that, well, honestly, one of the conversations that I have with my candidates is their behavior on social media because, you know, I can see it. I can see it on LinkedIn. I can see it on Facebook. Or someone will come to me and tell me that something racist or sexist was posted. Um, so if that occurs, I usually have a conversation with them and I have a two strike rule. If I have to have two conversations with you about it, it might be that I am not the recruiter for you. Very simple. I'm not gonna fight with somebody about it. The boundary is, is that that is how you choose to hold yourself and represent yourself. That is not who I am. And I can't work with somebody who is going to behave in that manner. And the same thing goes for on site. People come on site acting all types of ways, running their mouth, the client can hear them cussing, saying whatever. That's what happens on social media too, you know? And I think that people don't, let me rephrase that. I'm, I'm not sure that people can translate that, you know, like being online in ways of like being on site and your behavior in both places is under a microscope at all times. It's a perspective. I think that's a great perspective. I think it's interesting to, to I mean, I haven't, I'm sorry. I didn't even think of it that way. I think it's interesting and, I, and I, I'm sure Austin agrees with me to think that your online presence reflects your in-person presence at this day and age, or especially after COVID. I mean, that, that just seems such a logical step 
uh, and what we're doing, like, hey, who you represent online is definitely who you're going to be in the show site. If you represent yourself as something that is not what I what I, I want around my clients, I'm not going to bring you on job site. And don't and don't act surprised when it's like, well, I didn't bring you on because you're always dropping f bombs in your comments, or you're always being racist or sexist or anything like that in all your commenting, or you're always being you know starting arguments even you know with everybody about it. You know, that's a, why would I bring you in front of my client? I don't need that. I don't need the stress of my client coming to me like that. Um, I mean, also, I'll let you take it from there, but I mean, I'm sure you've got some deeper insight into, into stuff like that. Well, I, I agree with you a thousand percent because how I look at it is, as, as Steve said earlier, we're there for the client's best interest at the end of the day. Um, but some of the things that I do judge off of social media, you can see how well they interact with people, whether they're their friends or their colleagues and whether they have a difference in opinion or this difference in, in likes or whatever the case is. But you can see how they interact on social media. And that alone for me is a clear indication of how they operate in terms of teamwork how effective they are in terms of collaboration, because these are values that I, I make sure that is instilled in every tech that I put out on show site. Let's face it, the average client is not looking for a one trick pony anymore. And we need technicians who are skilled at multiple positions, or at least even if they're not skilled, they'll build their camera, but they won't just sit down there for the rest of the day. They'll help out with Drake if, if that needs to be done regardless of whatever the case is, but we're all working together. So social media sometimes can be a really good indicator of someone's strength or weaknesses in those areas or values. If those are some things that you're looking for when you're hiring people, um, it, it is for me. Um, but on the other side with the clients, I've seen clients as big as Microsoft ask for certain technicians to be dismissed off of show site because they had NDAs and they didn't want any pictures of their shows or anything to be up on social media and some little slick tech thought that they could get away with it and no one would notice not to mention we're at a Microsoft show this is probably the most technology you're going to see for the rest of the year and of course it's seen and they come right back to it hey I don't want this guy on my show gotta go the client the, when the client said they make their demands we have to fulfill them so yep. social media can make you or break you. Also, the way you represent me, well, with, whether we're talking about a convention center or a ballroom, right? The way that you represent your team, even if it's huge and we got 100 people on site, that's a, a room of 100 people. Let's say it has 2,500 guests. That's still 2,600 people. But when you put it out online, it's there for the world to see. It's there for millions and millions, and you can delete it. Someone already screenshotted it, and it's still going. So yeah, social sure. media says a lot about your character behind the scenes, and the people that that we can see how they operate behind the scenes are they'll we'll we'll know yes or no if we want to put them on the other side of the curtain. Do is that the type of representation I want for? our company, for our brand, for our team, with our beliefs, our values in front of my client. So I also see a lot of folks that will post the the negatives of, of their show. Now they're not posting details. They're not saying who their client was or, or which person pissed them off. But everything that they post about their work is in a negative instead Ooh. of a positive. So how do you Ooh. feel about that? Because those are folks that I feel like I don't really like we're friends and I love working with you and I love the work that you do. But then I look at your social media and it's like, it's either negative or non-existent. So my show didn't exist or you had a negative thing to say about your experience in whatever city. And it doesn't even matter if it was about the show, but negativity on your Facebook is, it, it blows my mind. How can you have nothing positive to put on Facebook? Especially when it's a trend, when it's ongoing over and over and over, because it kind of tells you something about their character, you know, exactly. the ones who can find a problem for every solution. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, life is hard enough. Definitely. <laughs> I just want to jump in here real quick. And, and Deza, you were showing these two comments I, I saw real fast um, about railroad and safety and something like that. Yeah. So Pete was saying, if you want to read that out. 
Uh, he used to work in the railroad and there's rules about certain jobs that prohibit you from talking about anything other than the job you're working on now. And that's only via radio or telephone. So obviously no video or cameras are involved. And then he said the main re reason for that is for safety. So when you're moving several hundred tons of cargo or people, uh, you don't want to talk about anything else other than that focus of the job that you're currently doing. Seriously. I, I like that a lot. And m m maybe, you know, and I'll let the panel jump in on this. Maybe that's something we should apply. And a lot of guys that are watching tonight, hey, put that in your back pocket. Maybe when you're on job site, don't talk about it on social media. Don't post things about it. Wait till after the job. Mm -hmm. And hopefully be positive because obviously the, the way you will represent yourself, like Austin's saying, which is a big key to this industry, right? Because you people want to work with people they like to work with. The way you Very represent true. yourself and hold yourself, not only when you're with them, but outside of them really shows who you are. And social media allows you that kind of window to your personal life. Like, oh, is, is Omar just like this in front of me? And then behind my back, he's something else. That is very apparent in social media world. You know, don't don't try to be one person in front of your client, somebody that's behind the back, because they're going to see that. And I've seen it myself on social media where I work with people that I see the, how they are in front of clients. Like, oh, this is great. And then on the other end, it's like, like Ray's saying, you know, that they're a totally negative person. Like, oh, this is bullshit, this is bullshit, that. It's like, dude, I thought you were having a great time, but apparently you're... You know, you're not honest with what you really are thinking. So, like, that's that's a kind of a problem for me because I, I want to make sure that you're having a good time on the job. I want to make sure you're, you're doing your job effectively and providing you what you need. And if you're telling me everything's good and then on the back end saying the opposite, that affects me because, like, you were on my job with my show and, like, I feel like I didn't do my job correctly now. Um, but, again, I'll let the floor open up with that. You know, what do you guys think about maybe telling people, hey, if you're on a job site, which it seems like this is a, a clear thing, don't post about it. Don't talk about it until after the fact. If you if you feel like you have to, because that's the personality, right? You have to share it with the world. Um, maybe keep that for later. <laughs> well, and I know it probably goes without saying, but never name names. Like you notice, a lot of us have been right. a lot of stories tonight. We don't know who the client was or who the racist, sexist <laughs> tech was or, or any of that shenanigans, right? So never name names. Uh, I know there are moments where it's like you're so emotional and you just kind of blurt it out. But really, yeah, you, you don't ever want to name names. If there are story. tons of things that you shouldn't do with an emotional response. And social media is one of them. You, you don't text make phone calls and emails and social media with an emotional response. Wait until your emotions come back to reality, clear your head. You know, maybe you've had an overreaction to whatever scenario just happened. You have to not make that emotional response. And I've just seen it too many times. Um, but with the, the railroad and safety, I actually wanted to say that I prefer that people, for the most part, not be on their phones, especially during load-ins and such. Um, and I know that uh, Megan's two-strike rule was referring to something a little different, but if you get like headphones on and you're working in a load-in and there's rigging going on and stuff like that, you've got headphones in, I'm almost like 100% going to, to take you out right for doing that. But I do give a warning. Um, and believe it or not, I had somebody that did that had to be told twice when we were working in a construction building and literally loading in mm. on the fourth floor of a building with a single uh, piece of wood between us and an eight story drop. You cannot be on your headphones during load in safety, safety, safety. Ray, I'm not even going to lie. As you said that, I was checking myself because on show site, you can only have in one. And now I just put in the second one. I felt so guilty as you said that. <laughs> but you don't have rigging going on over your head. You don't have. I know, a, a but it's habit. Drop. It's habit. Have... <laughs> and, you know, if I if I tell you once and and OK, that's fine. But this person had to be told twice. It's like, sweetheart, do you see that that is an eight? story drop and we're loading in in this much room yeah seriously yeah no liabilities <laughs> so i want i want to jump in real quick 
we're at like the 37 mark, almost, you know, past 35 when I wanted to say, but we, we, we've been kind of uh, on the negative side a little bit here, a little bit of positive, more negative than anything else. And, and I, I, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I want to end this in the last 20 minutes here on some positives. Uh, what are some ways, and Megan, I'll, I'll have you start first, and then we can go to Tom and then Ray uh, and Steve. What are some positives you guys seen that you've you've noticed through social media where when you go to that next step, okay, we like this guy, let's see what's going on. You've been like, oh, you know what? Diving in deeper, like I want to hire this person even more. I want to talk to this person even more because of the social media. What are some positive stuff you guys have seen that people can emulate or do on their own feeds, uh, maybe starting now if they want to, because it, it sounds like it's picking up an industry uh, to get themselves ready for what's about what's going to happen down the road with uh, with live events and everything else going on. Um, so something, it, it, it's what I mentioned before, it's the community aspect, you know, like really looking out for each other. Maybe I'm very partial to that because I do come from a theater background. So it's like very community oriented. But for me, um, again, maybe because, you know, I've worked in labor and staffing recruiter is making sure that people have resources. So they have resources to education. So they have resources to potential jobs or connections, um, trainings especially. And so when I see people helping people, sharing links or, oh, let me connect you with this person, what's your email, things along that line, that makes me interested because you're a person like me who wants to help others. So I wanna to talk to you. If you're that person, I'm gonna find you and I'm gonna to talk to you. And never once have I regretted that. Never once. Well, I'll let you jump on next. Yep, I have to completely agree. Seeing how you interact in the community, that you're a supporter, a teacher, um, and even just you know what you do with your fellow workers, how you're interacting. Uh, there's a lot of positive out there and like, like you said, we're focusing on the negative, but even, you know, I had a great day working with and listing off a bunch of names. I've had people do that to me. Uh, it, it makes you feel good. And that's part of our community. And that's, that's a positive, huge positive. Go ahead, Tom. You're muted. Um, oh, did I mute again? No. There you go. There you go now. Uh, you and Rebecca with, you know, the AV Educate and so on, uh, you know, very supportive of the community, putting out a lot of stuff that, that helps people, putting on these shows. Um, I have a friend, Lizzie, who has a website when she posts, you know, job openings and, and links to, you know, a lot of uh, labor companies and, you know, a lot of people really supportive. And there's been a lot of stuff, uh, you know, in D.C., People have had people have had a lot of problems with the unemployment because we all work in Maryland, D.C., and Virginia, and so it's been very complicated for people to get unemployment uh, based on you know where they live, where they work, because you know, we work in all those jurisdictions, and it's like, well, you have to go to this this organization or this organization, and people have been helping each other out with how to get get their unemployment sorted out. And so that's that's been really good. You know, there's been a lot of stuff on Facebook with people helping each other. I miss DC. <laughs> and Steve, I'll let you jump on that next, and then, and then I'll, I'll also do a follow-up with you with a question I see from the audience. Okay. I, I think it's important for us to remember that social media is a community-based, and it's social, right? The name social, and then the media aspect of it. So there's some form of technology that's new. And us as social beings ever since, you know, clicking rocks for fire and, and paintings on the walls to where we get fear from those old anecdotal stories from ancestors, we're social creatures. And it's important for us as labor coordinators, you know, that, that do productions to, to have that community, right? Because you're my family out there on that show. And I want to know what's going on in your life, because if you're struggling with some aspect, I'll see it on a social media. If you have that open and that access because the last thing we want to do is put people out there that are not feeling their best or they're going through something with their family, maybe their friend, you know, maybe they're, they've gotten sick, you know, and they're dealing with like an illness per se. And, and that's hard. And then 
go to a show site so their mind's not really focused. So like we, I think we encourage, you know, like the education aspect of it, you know, and knowing the community aspect of it, but it's a great way for us to know and to lift each other up during those times that we're feeling low or like now during the pandemic where we're trying to get PPP and we're trying to get unemployment and we're frustrated being on the phones and like, who do we call, you know, and it, it's, it, we're here to help, you know, I, I think that's something that we forget that, that we are, you know, just because we are that middle person between the client and then that labor force on the ground, you know, I really feel more joy knowing that I can talk one-on-one -on -one with the tech because they have their own brand and they're promoting their brand like I'm promoting my brand, but we're also invisible in a way because we have to promote that client's brand. And that client wants that photograph that's on the website with all those happy tech smiling, you know, and they're all like clean cut and there's like five of them and they're all looking like they could go accomplish Rome in a day in a sense. But that social media presence of how we post and how we interact becomes critical to know who and, and what would be the appropriate time to put somebody on a show. You know, and I, I speak from my own personal experience, you know, I wouldn't want to put anybody else out there, but you know, it was a time in my life where I wasn't appropriate to be on a show because I just, I was going through family issues and it was so hard for me to deal with that element of my life before I could actually go and be an effective worker. And I think that's important, not just for AV techs and production and freelancers, but for the general population in, in general, right? Because like, if you're not feeling your best and you're going through a divorce or you're going through a breakup or you found out that you have cancer or your family's getting or somebody passed away, you know, there's all this negativity out there and, and you go to work and, and then you don't know as an employer, like, you could have some friction and it's not uncommon. Like we said earlier about emotional bursts, you know, and that's normal, right? Someone's going to have an emotional burst because they're under pressure. They've got all this stress and it's important for us to kind of know if you share that with us, I'm not asking you to go and post all these intimate details of life, but it, you know, it is helpful to know that if you are experiencing something that needs, you know, some encouragement, that's what we're here to do. Because the last thing I want to do is put somebody out there that's unfocused, that isn't thinking safety first, you know, that's emotionally unstable out in a workplace, because that's a recipe for disaster, in my opinion. I definitely like where you just went there. I definitely, I fall on that line a little bit myself. You know, I got to admit, it was, it was interesting. Uh, beginning of COVID, I started, which I, I don't know if anybody is aware of it, but I was one of the founders of the Live Events Coalition. One of the four that started that so that we are at events stuff those hashtags you guys see everywhere that's part of my stuff i created the logo and, and all that for that whole company um and and for similar reasons i had a you know because of covid and loss of income and job and a separation from my spouse at the time i had to back away and kind of walk away from it all um but luckily through encouragement from the community um and people like that I, you know i continued to do av educate to keep my mind you know keep my sanity but um, I totally can relate to you on that. And I, and I, I get where that's coming from. Cause I've been there myself and I definitely, you know, had to step away to, to, to regather myself and get back on track. And Austin's been there with me. And, and so has Ed and Chris and, and these guys. So it's definitely been a, an experience in itself. I, I got to, you know, you just took me back there for a second. Cause I was like, man, I, I know exactly what he's talking about. I've been there myself. Um, and it, it's a hard sp place to be in, but, um, sorry, I want to get back on track. I'm talking too much. Um, so Disa, you had, you had posted something or shown us something that I think Steve had said about, uh, the way he posted, uh, kind of posted, uh, certain videos or commenting on social media where he would say, Hey, I had a great show with XYZ person and gave credit to XYZ company. Uh, yeah, here we go. So from James Wimsley, uh, how does the panel feel about posts such as I had a great day today with XYZ company or the latest show blank and I was sponsored for operating blank. I normally post something like this after the job. And use it uh use it as not only a marketing tool but for myself uh but the company and i kind of feel like steve you you have something good you want to you jump on that and megan as well i feel like you kind of spoke on this so if i can ask steve you go first and then megan kind of touching base on what james you okay. just said what are you guys thoughts on that i think as long as it doesn't conflict with an nda uh i think uh, last week i i mentioned that i take stuff back i call it bts behind the scenes and you know where it's not logos there's nobody in the picture and it's just a quick to just to show that we're working right we need to see us working we need to see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel because so many of us are introverts and so when we see some of our friends that are extroverts we need that kind of catalyst to say hey wait a minute 
and then we kind of get wrapped in that whirlwind with them and that positive energy, even those negative Nancy's out there who are like, oh, but you know what? We love you anyway. We need you on the shows and, and we'll help you through those difficult times because believe me, we've all been through it. And, and for those young and the, the older ones, it, it doesn't get easier, but we are a community that helps each other. So by posting like, hey, these are our buddies. These are our friends. You know, we've got each other's backs that that strengthens that community. You know, just to kind of take one more second, there's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And, and in that, that bottom layer of, of survival, as you move up to that self-actualize, there's that belonging state. And so I want you to feel like you belong to a team just as much as you belong to your own team, whether it's your family, your friends, you know, your social network. And so that way, as long as we can keep bringing that belongingness, it strengthens that unit uh, uh, for self-actualization. Yeah, that's great. I'm a big fan of the muscles arc. I use that as in the military a lot. It, 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 as a leader, it helped me very, very much make sure I was dedicating time and make sure I was hitting the right things for my crew. Uh, and Megan, so I'll let you jump on it as well. I knew what you were saying kind of alluded to that as well. And, and I think you had some good insight on as well for what uh, uh, he was saying earlier. For sure. Um, you know, again, I agree with Steve. <laughs> Um, but there's so much about when I see that happen that I feel this overwhelming sense of positivity. It's the, yes, people are working and they love what they do. And then for me, since I work with so many LED engineers, you know, it's this wall, this beautiful wall that has gone up and I know how much love and craft that they put into it. And so I celebrate it. When I see somebody show that, I'm like, yes, I love this. It fuels everyone's positivity. Then people start a conversation. Oh, what tile is that? What was the processing? You know, like it gets really interesting. Everyone nerds out a little bit. And um, it always makes me feel really good. So I like seeing that stuff. It seems like everyone likes seeing it. I, I think you just have to be careful and use your best judgment on if the circumstance is correct for it. Go ahead, can Rose. I can I add something here? Um, because we're so community based, I, I wanna ask the panel how they feel about this, but the way I feel about it is, it means more to me to say that you worked today for Media Stage or whatever AV company, producer company, whoever signed your check then it does to say that I worked for, you know, the, the gas company for whatever state or Hewlett Packard or Google. It means more to me to see who in our community hired you. Do you guys feel the same way? 100%. I do. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I do. So I'm when a, you're I'm looking at those companies, those it should be the company that signed your check, not not the end client. <laughs> I'm a big right. fan of like right. tagging my friends when I take photos with them and tagging the company I was with. I'm, I'm all about that. Like, cause that, you know, it just okay. shows like, Hey, these are like the guys I hang with. These are the people I hang out with. And, and honestly, some of the people like, like I hear them with today, some of the guys that are here, these are guys that I look up to. They, they do, you know, I, uh, one of the guys here is a disguise operator. Like definitely a good friend of mine. I'm super proud that he's gone the disguise route and done this stuff, but like, yeah, I want to hang out with you more, bro. I want to, I want to learn disguise better. You know, I want to be at that level too. So like, let's, let's hang out. Um, but yeah, I, I love name dropping my buddies on social media and tag I'm with because that's that's what I'm doing. And honestly, like you can see from what I do with this with AV Educate, I, I love this industry and what it is and what it's about. And I want to promote it as much as I can and get people to, to know about it, you know, from the labor coordinator I worked with to the company I'm working for, like the companies I'm working for, you know, the end end clients, it's anybody, right? It's just gonna change week to week, day to day. But the company that's writing my checks, they're gonna ones the ones that gonna call me, not the end company. They don't care who I am. You know, it's like I work for Microsoft. They don't care who I am. Like, oh yeah, but I, I hired XYZ company. That's that's who I care about. Like, great. Then right. You wanna make that person. And like you're saying, right? I yeah. I'm big on that just because I want my clients to know, hey, I really like working with you. I want to make sure that you're getting the credit for this stuff too. And I want you to get more work so you can call me to get more work because I want to work. <laughs> yes, I remember sir. running into this yeah. early on when Facebook first started, where somebody came to me and said, Do you mind if I you know, make this post where Davida is taking me on the road. I'm like, but Davida's not taking you on the road. Crew Works from Baltimore is taking you on the road. The, Davida has no idea who you are. And I think it right. says more about <laughs> Crew Works trusting you to, to be their face on the road than it says about Davida. Who cares about Davida? 
I, I think that actually comes down to self-awareness. And sometimes I feel like they're just trying to stroke their own ego with the by coinciding mm-hmm. it with a big name. Um, yeah. Really and truly, I think that's all that's about. But, but um, I think it's but, just something they're not thinking about, you know? Very true. Very true. Because I, the, the power of social media is absolutely phenomenal. What you're talking about is the power of referrals. I, honestly, yeah. I have gained new clients because technicians who loved working for me saw a post somewhere and they said, hey, hit up Austin or AJ Marks Entertainment and I'll get a phone call or, or we'll connect somehow and new business happens that way. It happens all the time. So that's why it's important for us as labor coordinators to take care of our technicians, to empower our people, because they are the forefront of our business, but they can also return it on the back end through those referrals, through just saying, hey, I had a great time working with such and such today because that is word of mouth. And like I said, once it's out there, it's out there for the masses to see. And just to touch base on something you were talking about earlier, Steve, um, when we talk about the hard times that a lot of these, every one of us go through, like you said, whether it's bad diagnosis or, or a breakup or whatever these hard times are in, in, in your family or in your current life, these are times that we're not up to par, so to speak. So we can't really perform the way that we want to on show site. But still, look at the power of social media. The same mm-hmm. community, the brothers that the brothers and right. sisters that we build all around us, they're the same ones to pick us up and encourage us at those times when we're at our lowest. Hey man, yeah. uh, I'm sorry that you're going through that. I miss seeing you on show site. Man, I used to love it when you was calling the, the camera shots for me. Whatever the case is, and something to take your mind off of what is going on currently and back to the person who you used to be, get you back into the groove and things. And that's the power of brotherhood. Honestly, throughout the pandemic over the past year, we've lost so many brothers and sisters in the industry. And I'm talking from death to them transitioning out of the industry. And it's so sad to see, but every time any hardship comes, the, 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 the sun, the sunlight on the other side of the horizon for me is when I see all of these technicians come together and you see one person's post getting posted 150 times because everybody misses that. And they're all different pictures from a different show or a different position. So you know that they were really a part of the community. I feel like in AB, it, AB builds families. And and social yeah. media keeps us connected so that we can have these families in in New York, in Kansas, in Puerto yep. Rico, in California, wherever, and we can still stay connected, kind of keep tabs and say, I wonder what this is doing this week, or whatever the case is, but we keep in touch. And to me, that's the power of all of this. See, and now you guys see why I don't like to talk as much, and I like Austin to do all the talking because it's really good, <laughs> right? I mean, he just speaks from the heart. It just came out, and you're like, "Yes, everything." And you like your kid yes. crying? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so Disa, we're at, we're at five minutes left here. Um, I I see you've been soaking in on the information, the negative, the positive. I want to get a little take on your side from what you've soaked in tonight. What What do you feel? Um, this is the last five minutes, so I want to get this closing remark. But what do you feel, Disa, before we get to that point? Um, is some key takeaways about tonight's talk. I I just there's so much. I I, I feel like <laughs> yeah, going on in the chat that I don't know if people are following, but people like making all the comments on the live stream, and I finally said, "Yummy!" Yeah, I <laughs> and then everyone started being nice. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, the live stream ability. But, you know, to go back to the very top of our conversation where Steve was doing the example of the, the elbow cable wrap for 15 <laughs> an hour, you know, like there is a fake it till you make it to a certain extent. Right. But like I've been in the industry for 15 years as the technician for 10 of those years. And, you know, so it's, it's not like, oh, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like you still have to have some basic concept of, of what's gonna go on right so yes. i'm not fine-tuned like omar would be just making all 
the states look old. I would be the high, yeah, I'd be like the 25, which I think I like the distinction. Like, there's a 15 guy for cables, and there's a 25 guy. For, I'm the 25 guy. <laughs> I, 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 you guys are name pronouncing. I don't know Oh, no, name pronouncing. I'm the 15 hour guy. That, that's true. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, you know, like it's definitely it, we work in a very specialized field. This is not something you can just walk in and pretend you know how to operate a, you know, a six figure camera. Like we have some projector yeah. lenses. I've seen those go uh, like a ten thousand dollar lens because some guy was forcing <laughs> something that you. <laughs> If it's not doing what it's supposed to do, that's right. Probably put it down and maybe ask someone who knows, right? So this yeah. is very expensive equipment. This is not something you want to pretend you know what you're doing with. Um, and the stage deck analogy, obviously, there's a huge risk of getting hurt with rigging, uh, especially those turntable stages. Uh, I haven't had my fingers punched, but I can Ooh, tell you yeah. that, hurt, that would hurt, you know, like. That go in the pin, right? Uh, oh, <laughs> so yeah. So lots, lots of takeaways. You know, don't don't try and fake anything. Um, but also on the, on the positive side, I do feel like social media does like just just like Austin said, it brings us all together. But also, it can be a tool for uh, business development. I've been able to actually get some leads. I can't say I close many leads, but I do see. I get a lot of LinkedIn notifications of people looking at my profile. A little tip: I did add virtual events professional, and then I've gone and asked people that feel like I've worked with them. I've asked them to give me recommendations on LinkedIn, like an actual typed. I worked with Lisa and Encore on X Y Z event. She did a bilingual live stream for us, or or whatever it is that we did for them. So finding people that feel comfortable, and naturally you want to make sure that if you are asking for recommendations, that you're also giving recommendations in return. Mm -hmm. So your planners, yes. your clients, you want to make sure you reciprocate all of that because uh, it does take a little bit of time. But then also, if you are asking for recommendations, just type literally what you'd like them to say <laughs> and they can put it in their mm -hmm. reports or copy paste. Boosh. <laughs> Um, so, like yeah. LinkedIn so, cheat codes here. I like this. I like this. <laughs> Make sure when you send it to Disa and you send it to somebody else that you you know change it a little bit. Just <laughs> yeah, both copy paste. Yeah, right. you know. Like, but it's true. You're absolutely right. I would prefer that somebody tell me what what you want me to put on there. Social media can definitely make or break you in the way of like what are you posting and also like using it for lead generation as well, making it so that people find you easy. Um, <laughs> Sean wants to be on the panel apparently. Uh, anyways, that's enough for me. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. No, you, you did awesome, you did amazing tonight. I, I told you it was super easy and you'd have a blast. So I'm gonna do things a little backwards tonight. Um, I always like closing out with Austin because clearly he's the master of words. You guys have definitely seen it the last few minutes. Um, but I'm gonna do this a little back. I want Steve, I'll have you go first. And then Ray, and then Tom, and then Megan. Uh, just final words you want to give to anybody who's out there who's watching tonight about social media. Uh, maybe your own spin on what you think is either, hey, avoid this, or if you want to just do a, you know, hey, these are positive things you should be doing, things that I would appreciate. Um, just any kind of final words you have for the audience. And then, as always, Austin, I'll close it out with you. Um, and then uh, we'll call it tonight. Okay, great. So like a final word on social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, remember it's about your branding and even your family. That, right, Because who you are with your family, your friends, and then with your business and having like that career. So being careful of what you post and if it's somewhat edgy, there's gotta be a point behind it, right? And, and up for us trying to hire somebody we may not be wrapped up in that point and that may be like a division of where you want to work like maybe you would want to work in an industry doing that so just understand like it's a brand and, and we use it for branding as well as the social aspect of it i use it a lot for hiring and putting out job calls in different markets so it's something that i've used to build shows to build my teams in texas you know in, in nashville and tennessee 
you know, and kind of branching out. So it's it's one of those things that it's not going to go away. So people, they're like, I hate it, I hate it. I'm sorry, but it's it's not going to go away. It may not be Facebook tomorrow. It may be something else, but it's going to be here just like the devices are here, and, and it's going to keep moving forward. So help it help you on your branding, on your marketing, and then generating what you want from it. Wow. I have to follow that. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> well, not okay. So think about what you post, why you post it, but not only that, comments in our groups and communities. Um, are you being supportive? Are you being negative? Those are also things that we're looking at because sometimes we're getting notified that so and so, you know, commented on this particular post. So we are seeing what we're talking about no matter what we're doing. Um, try to find some positives in everything that you do. And that's just life in general. But for heaven's sake, put some of that on social media, please. <laughs> I was going to just say, it's remember, it's an amplifier. You know, social media is an amplifier. And if, if something is good, it can make it bigger and better. But if something is bad, it can make it bigger and worse. So just be careful. Um, so something that wasn't discussed tonight, and I just want to touch on it briefly, is that LinkedIn is not a dating website. Um, <laughs> because I have been harassed, I have been stalked, I have been, uh, a lot of things have been said to me because I did not return advances from people in the AV industry. So with that in mind, do not use LinkedIn as a dating website. It's not okay. Just please don't do it. With that said, be purposeful into your, in your interactions. Remember that this is a community that actually really truly wants to hold each other up and learn and do the right thing. So do the right thing like you would do it in real life on social media. That was excellent. That brings me to a very good point that someone made in the comments a little earlier about making this a two part session. We might need to make a little dive into LinkedIn there. Uh, I, I, I definitely know some people that might want to dive into that topic a little bit because that is insane to hear that people are doing that on LinkedIn. And I apologize for that. Um, I apologize for that. I can't speak for the rest of the world, but I apologize for that. Um, but I'd love to do a talk on that and address that because if that is a, an issue and it's occurring, it needs to be addressed. And I'm willing to do it on our show and address it and make it like, yo, don't do this. Plain and simple. Uh, but again, I'm talking too much. Austin, please take it away, bro. Do what you do best. I got to follow Megan after that. <laughs> Man, um, once again, tonight has been a phenomenal night, and I'm looking forward to next week just to keep this conversation going. Um, we're discussing the power of social media, whether it can be used for both good or bad. Um, a few of the things that we talked about was the marketing side of it, the power of referrals, um, the power of branding. But what Megan just said was so powerful. Be purpose driven with knowing who you are and what you post. Know that you can be noticed for being a leader on social media. Notice that you may be recruited for being a good student by asking a question because we are always looking for people in our community who are eager to learn. Know who you are, what you represent, and who your brand is. Make sure you go out there and represent accordingly anytime you are on social media or show site. Until next week, you guys take care.